Today, I want to talk about the design phase of Think, Design, Make. In my career as a designer, one of the painful things to do is to design threads. And that's why in mechanical design, threads have never been uh, designed uh, effectively, but just with uh, sketch lines that uh, idealize the design of threads. So um, this is, of course, not a viable option for 3D printing, because in 3D printing, you have to actually create the helix of the, of the thread, so you cannot just uh, sketch it with two parallel lines. That's why I needed to do this. You will probably fail or have a difficulty to see the small thread in this part, which is 3D printed. Uh, I'm going to go a bit uh, through that in a minute. So if you are curious on how to design threads with uh, Fusion 360, you've come to the right place. So here you see the part we want to model with Fusion 360. I have already modeled it. It has an outer and an inner thread. Uh, I'm going to discuss a bit uh, what this part is about because it is, uh, of course, for my 3D printer. So let's go back to the start. So if you're not familiar with uh, Fusion 360, you have the history bar here on the bottom. So I'm going to scroll all the way down to the beginning. So beginning is very simple. It's just the pipe and that's how we want to make the thread. This is how you make the thread. So pretty simple though. So let us look into the edit feature. So how this has been built. So what is very important here is to click this modeled button because if we uncheck it, it will just show a kind of a texture of the thread. But since we want to do the 3D printing thing, we want to have it modeled. So this will model the thread completely and it will save you the effort of making it yourself. You can choose between a lot of different uh, thread specifications and sizes. The size will be automatically picked from the cylinder diameter and then you can decide the pitch, the class of surface and the direction if it's a right or a left hand. And if it's a full length, thread or if you want to do it different uh, thread length. So this is just the beginning because you don't want to have a thread that starts and ends like this. It's uh, quite easy to damage the beginning of the thread so it becomes a bit uh, difficult to print like this. So that's why we go and we create this chamfer. You cannot just chamfer with the chamfer tool here so you cannot use this. You have to create a chamfer out of a sketch. So this is simply a sketch I made with the dimensions of the thread. So we want to do 2.3, uh, which means 4.6 diameter and just uh, whatever length, 45 degrees. So this will just cut through uh, the whole thing. So here we go. And then we revolve it. And this is how it looks like in real life. So you see that there is a nice chamfer here on the thread that will make um, uh, assembling your part much easier than just uh, beginning with the blade. Which, by the way, will never, print it, never be printed uh, perfectly. So I went on again with my design. And uh, so I'm going to just fast forward through this. What I want to show you just is that I created a middle plane and then I mirrored the same chamfer so I didn't have to do it twice. Uh, one other nice feature of uh, uh, of uh, Fusion 360, if you're uh, if you've ever used other CAD systems, is that it allows you to move entire features, just uh, move them like this. I used to use a lot of Creo, and that's not a feature that is available in Creo. You have to change the parameters and have it move. You can just not just drag, take it, and drag it and drop it. Then let's go to the next part, which is a bit the interesting bit, um, because this is where I have applied uh, a few tricks connected to 3D printing. So hole, same thing as before. So you can uh, create a hole with a thread in it. So you just uh, go in here, select all your references, you put uh, the hole in the middle, and then you can decide you want a, 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 th a thread here. So you, you choose it tapped and you have the same menu. So you can decide uh, what kind of uh, uh, thread you want. Class is not really important because this is for uh, machine parts. Uh, we're not going to talk about hundreds of millimeter anyway. And again, don't forget to flag the modeled 
um, tick box because if you take it uh, off it will not actually model the part. I went on and I made another chamfer so you can see it here it's just uh, then there is a bunch of other features and this is where th things start getting interesting. So I have created another hole and then if you go back here and just see what is the diameter of the uh, let's say of the thread heads it's 5.035 so that's the uh, let's say the, the, the diameter of the smaller part of the thread 5.035 so that's where I have created another hole and the hole here is actually 5.2 so I wanted to make it a bit larger so that means it removes roughly 0.1 millimeters from each side so this makes the thread a bit uh, smaller and that's very useful because as much as you want to calibrate your 3d printer that will never be calibrated enough to print correctly uh, parts which are a hundred of a millimeter so you want to get this uh, a bit uh, um, wider so it doesn't get you crazy around that so that's where I do the chamfers again and this is the other part which is quite interesting and I'm going to go through uh, actually a cross section because that I think it's uh, easier to understand so let me make it yeah here it goes so first of all you will see what happens to the hole so this is the original hole and this is the bigger hole. So you see that the, the top part here of the thread is being cut away. Pretty simple. Another very nice feature of Fusion 360 is the push-pull feature. So I said, okay, I got rid of the top here. I want to make sure also this, um, this bottom part of the thread is also enlarged. So what I did is that I selected all three surfaces and I just used the push-pull feature. And here it comes. So in this case, it's been pushed pu pushed down by 0.1 millimeter again. So what this does is that it simply just pushes away the um, all the features in a parallel way. So if you have to do this with uh, an helical sweep, it will drive you crazy. Well, this is just a click of the button. And that's it. So the rest is just uh, making sure that all the uh, different parts of my model fit and that's it so pretty simple just remember when you do 3d printed parts you can use this feature on um, on uh, fusion you will never get a perfect thread that fits uh, snugly and perfectly at the first print and to conclude this is an m6 thread so it's a six millimeter diameter thread so it's a very tiny part and it worked perfectly on my printer on a 0 0.1 uh, layer height and um, uh, regular 0 0.4 millimeter uh, diameter nozzle. So uh, this is it for the short uh, demo of how to do threads on Fusion 360. So I showed you how to design this and this, these two parts. Let's take this uh, to a side for a minute and let's focus on this one. So I have one that I printed uh, just like uh, the UNF thread is supposed to, to be and I have this uh, screw from a, a tripod I'm not using any longer. So if I try to screw the two parts together you will see that after a while it starts to just get stuck. So I cannot go beyond this and that's probably because I have the chamfer that helps me and then uh, uh, the, the thread becomes just simply too narrow to manage. Well, this one instead is designed with the same technique that I showed you. And if I try to screw this one in, you will see how easily it goes in. So this is how I designed it and this is the result. I think it was interesting to show a bit of a different angle um, to how to do design. Of course, uh, learning Fusion 360 is an important skill for any maker. But at the same time, you have to also to learn a bit of the tricks and, and tips uh, to make sure that you can design 3D printed parts. And uh, this is um, the other part that I designed and that's what uh, started all this. So I'm going to share with you in, an, in my next video what this is all about.
If you like if you like what you see, just hit the subscribe button and also ring the small bell next to it if you want to get notifications of my new new videos coming up. Here we come to the end of the video today. So I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new from uh, this uh, few minutes. Until next time.